What's up, Salt Strong Nation? You are going to love this video. If you love catching speckled trout, this is one of the coolest things we've done. And a couple of things, Luke and I have now done this five times, and this has worked 100% of the time. So I'm gonna throw that out there. Number two, I want to make sure that you learn from my mistake in this video. And here's what I mean. You're gonna see in this, we catch a lot of trout, just a lot of fish, and at one point, I decided I wanted to get a thumbnail picture, which is fine. I'm all about getting pictures of your fish. However, I made the grave mistake. I actually wet my hand like you're supposed to, and then I, with one hand, I tried to take a picture, dropped it not once, but twice. Quite frankly, I was embarrassed. I was almost like, man, we just gotta cut this thing out. But part of our promise to you with these videos is that it is uncut. It's really what happens on the water. And sometimes this kind of stuff happens. It was a really, really good learning lesson and experience for me. Uh, and I want you to learn from it as well. One of our core beliefs here at Salt Strong is that when we do make mistakes, we own them. And then we learn from them and hopefully get to share those mistakes with other people so that you don't make them. I was, once again, frankly embarrassed by this, but it was a great reminder of the right way and the wrong way to do it. The fish did swim off, but then again, it wasn't fair to the fish and it was just bad. It was just bad handling. So please learn from my mistakes. Enjoy this video and go out and try this and let us know how it works for you. Enjoy. They see me trolling, they hate it. They got the slam shady riding dirty. <laughs> Everyone, welcome to another show. We are live. And yes, we are actually trolling for trout. Trolling for specks, baby. Uh, let's hope this is, this oh, that's is the actually biggest not lizard one. fish I've ever seen. Look at the size of that lizard fish. That's a nice uh, world record lizard. <laughs> Man, that could be uh, that could be bait for later. Sheesh. So anyhow, if you're just tuning in. Look at that, quick release. We've got our Slam Shady Paddle Tail Lures, and we are out here in an idle zone, trolling. You know, we used to think, right, oh, Luke? Oh, are. Luke's on. There Ooh, we are. The coolest part, too, about this. This might be a ladyfish here. Is it feels like you got massive 10 pounders on when you get a strike. Um, yes, yeah, is it? But you no, know, normally yeah. we would uh, we would kind of not enjoy zones like this where you're having to idle for sometimes a mile or so and our good friend and insider life lifer inner circle member dave Otti. oh that's off that was a lady fish had uh quick had release told us like how many fish he's catching trolling and of course he's in his kayak normally uh but even when sometimes he's going to the boat he just sits there and trolls in these uh idle zones or no motor zones and uh talks about how well he does when he was down here not too far from here to E.G. Simmons Park and caught like how many snook trolling? Yeah, yeah, I fished with them. Uh, I fished with them the day before our meetup and uh, had a blast and he was telling me about trolling and so. Oh. Uh, oh, I just had a nice strike. And so the day after we <laughs> fished, he was, he went out in his kayak and just went to the same type of spot that we were fishing and ended up catching, it was either four or five snook trolling a paddle tail, like trolling the same paddle tail uh, back behind his kayak, which, uh, which I'd never even heard of snook hitting like that and so that kind of intrigued me and we, we were out filming last week in this idle zone we had to go from point a to b and like oh, i might as well just drag some lures and we what how many fish did we catch we caught a ton oh yeah just non-stop it was lady actually fish the, trout yeah, big trout the, too. the biggest oh, there trout, we go. the biggest trout of the day oh lady fish the biggest you gotta trout love of the, it day, when the drags yeah. coming out with us uh... try, try to get them over there keep them away from my line <laughs> yeah oh there we oh i just missed something I think we're in lady there fish we are now. We, oh, we doubled up. Or, I probably have lady fish after mine right now. Yep, there we are. I'm hooked up. Big old lady fish, too. These feel like giant. Yeah, look, this thing's taking out drag. <laughs> giant fish when uh, when you're actually in motion like this. This yeah. is so much fun. I mean, talk about fun for the whole family. I mean, and yes, although it helps to have Slam Shady, I think any paddle tail will, uh, will work. Although you'll probably catch 10 times more at the Slam Shady. I'm going to go ahead and put us in idle. Ha! How cool is that? And you can just do this to your, to your blue in the face. Mine hadn't come up yet, so I'm not sure what this is. Kobe, yeah. Uh, ah, Kobe, another, yeah. another lady Oh fish. my God, that's a little bit embarrassing. <laughs> but all you do, Big if you guys saw fish. me on my side, you literally just toss the sucker back, just a normal cast. What size is this joker? Quick little toss. And then tip, Come on, uh, right. man, dude, that is a beast of a ladyfish. Holy smokes. <laughs> I guess this 
That thing was taking out drag. But uh, Tarp, so we, tarpon bait right there. Yeah, we caught a trout right before we started filming just to make sure the fish were still here, and we should get in on some more. Anyhow, look, let me just show you what we're doing here. And if you're listening, all I'll do is got a paddle tail on that's what a one fourth jig head. I yeah, think. quarter ounce jig head is what he's using. That's a traditional a under, jig head. Underhand. I'm, I'm using this Texas eye jig head, so it's still a quarter ounce but it has a little wobbly head and uh, it's kind of a little bit more weedless. So we're uh, right now, we're just kind of seeing which one works better. So far, it's pretty much been a wash. So quick toss, let a little bit of line out. And you'll notice here, my rod tip is down because I want to get this a little bit deeper. We're in how many feet of water here? We're going from five, like five to three, basically. And occasionally I'll let a little slack out to have a little bit of that drop and then bring it back and just kind of play around with it and see what works. But this is, surprisingly effective it's a, it's and it's a lot of fun too. yeah it turns kind of turns a uh, a boring drive in this because uh, how long is this stretch here of, uh, it's a long, of idle zone it's a long it's idle this zone. whole state park basically and there's tons of these i mean you don't have to be here in even in florida to do this there's tons of areas like this that are going to have a little channel that are going to have some grass flats or some type of flat nearby and are probably going to be loaded down with with fish and you'll see some birds up there, uh, Cody, uh, I think you, uh, to your right that are flying. There's, you, there's some more over here on this old abandoned boat on the left. Doggone. What a fun, uh, fun way to catch some fish yeah, that anybody can do. And it does feel like you got monster fish on when they, uh, when they strike. Yeah, and the cool thing about this is, because I used to do this a lot, bass fishing, I'd do it in my canoe. And I'd take, I'd take like my mom out, just somebody who doesn't really fish very often. They'd literally just sit there. And in that case, I would just be paddling. So I was out getting exercise and uh, whoever was there was catching some really good bass. I actually caught some, some like legit bass, like 24 plus inches trolling behind the canoe. And uh, I just never until recently decided to try this saltwater. And uh, it definitely, definitely works. So let's talk about We'll talk about the spot in a little bit. Let's talk about tides. Uh, does it even matter? I, I honestly didn't even look. Well, right now it's coming in. I mean, we're, we're basically just fishing the, the edges of the flats and the fish are always gonna be there. So I don't think it matters a whole lot. You just want, just like, oh, there we are. Just like everything else, we want the water to be moving. Dude, you're way out there, man. Yeah, I had a, I had a lot of line out on that one. Just like everything else, you want the water to be moving. and. Uh, Right now, we're actually going with the current. It's, a, it's, a, it's not a very strong current, so I don't think it's a huge factor, but we're going with the current now. What we'll do is we'll go down the end and then come back and just see if the current makes that much of a difference. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask in terms of, uh, of lure presentation. I think, I think it's another giant lady fish. It's another lady? That's what it feels like. It hadn't been jumping, but it's fighting like it. Guys, if you're listening to the podcast, you need to watch this. Uh... Oh, it's a trout? No, it's a trout. Yeah, nice. It's a legit trout. Pretty fun. It's so simple. I mean, you could do this out of a kayak, right. paddleboard, oh. pedal kayak. Oh. You got him. Nice, dude. Slam Shady strikes again. Yeah, so this, this little trout, it fought like it was a 10-pounder with that current. So it definitely makes uh, Let me get a... Uh, let me Makes get a quick pitch. pick. Nope, I need to get an up close picture of a uh, slam shady. Better hurry. Nice little trout. Let's let this guy go. Okay. No picture. So I don't got no time for that. Who would have thought, dude? Yeah, so that's trout number two. Granted, the first one was before we were filming, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun. I'll blame that on a new guy, Cody. No, I'm just getting one. Cody's pulling it off. So again, to set it up, I'm just oh. casting basically as far as I can behind the boat. And I just let it, I let it get tight for a little bit. And then every once in a while, I just dip out a little bit more line. So let's talk about depth, both ideal kind of depth and then the, the lure. Uh, clearly when you're going fast, our lures are not near the bottom and it doesn't seem to really matter. What are your thoughts? I um, mean, yeah, just like always, you want the lure as close to the bottom as possible without getting snagged and caught up in all the, you know, whatever's on the bottom. 
And uh, so we're using, that's why we're using a quarter ounce jig head instead of like a one eighth, just to get a deep. Also, we have uh, light braided lines. We have 10 pound line and 10 pound braid line specifically because it's just thinner and it, it'll help dive down deeper. Um, and then just a 20 pound leader. So it gets going light, get it down deep. And, uh, if, and as far as speed, I mean, it's like, what is it? I don't know, it's just, it's basically, we're going just idle speed. Like the, the not this, I can go a little bit slower, but not much. And uh, so far we've had them both going like slowest possible speed. And then we've also caught fish going a little bit faster too. So I think it's really about just getting, uh, try to get the bait as close as you can to the bottom as possible. Obviously the thinner your line, the deeper it goes, the more line you let out, the deeper it goes and vice versa. Right now we're in five feet of water, and uh, I'm gonna let a little bit more line out. But then once you start feeling bottom, then it's time to either reel more line in or go from your rod down to the rod up, right? Rod up raises, rod down lowers. Yeah, because I think the the last time we did this was kind of by accident. We just had we had it in the rod holder, right? Like way up, like yay! If you yep. guys are watching, it was in this back rod holder, and all of a sudden we started seeing pop, 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 pop. You're like, holy smokes, what is that, a manatee over there? Yeah, a manatee just popped up. Let's not catch that. See, there's a cobia riding them. So yeah, right now it's actually 15 feet deep, so this is a deep hole. Huh. Yeah, that'll be interesting to see if we, uh, there's a manatee right there, dude. Yeah, manatee's, manatee's right ahead of us. Hopefully. Yeah, so I'm gonna, that. I'm gonna try yeah, to Yeah, so buzz. this will be a really interesting test here to see if we get any strikes in this deeper stuff. Yep. Any trout come from the abyss? People camping out there. I think we maybe catch one in their faces. I didn't realize it even got this deep back here. So yeah, now we're back. Uh, so we just went right over the ledge, and so now we're at five feet deep. So this should be where they are. We should we should be able to get something on this Strike ledge. Strike zone, baby. One thing too. The last time we did this, when we we didn't have the cameras rolling, we uh we were getting all kinds of fish coming up and nailing it, and we started losing you know some of the tails on the paddle tail, and we decided to try it out without the tail, and that did just as good. I think one of the biggest trout, right? We're uh, yeah. biggest trout was on the tailless one. Yeah, it was on the on the tailless. So don't feel like you have to replace it as long as it's rigged properly. It, is, it can't be a helicopter. That's the key. That just again, that goes the same thing with trolling or not trolling. Yeah, right around here was our good zone last time. Yeah, so we're. Uh, what do you think? We're gonna turn around up here and try it again, or what? Yeah, we'll keep going a little bit further. I'm, it'll be really curious to see if going with or with uh, against the current. Yep. It's a game changer, not. Nah. There's a bird right there, so this could be a good area. Chilling. That's where we saw those dolphins last time. Going nuts. Yeah, and I don't know this area very well, so what I'm doing is I'm just pulling out my phone and getting on Google Maps and uh, on the satellite image just to see exactly where the, the deeper spots are. Yeah, and we we had we recently had a meeting with Freedom Boat Club and uh, the uh, the Tampa one and they were wanting us to do help them do some videos on how to catch a lot of fish out of some of their boats that don't have trolling motors because I think the majority of their boats do not have trolling motors and this is one great way right Luke and the other one obviously is to you know use the wind and just drift across a flat but doggone you can do this uh, with or without the troll motor obviously we picked this area one because we had actually done this before here right yeah, I mean, and two, it, it really is an idle zone, and so it's like, hey, let's prove it in an area that we know it's going to work. But you can do the same thing on any normal flat. Yep. And yeah, I mean, the, our first trout actually came on the outside edge. Yep. I was just, I just kind of burned, uh, not burned, we just trolled right up the, the outside flat, and um, which any boat can access. And that we caught one and missed a couple, couple of something else. I don't know what they were. But this is definitely an easy, easy access type thing to do, any boat, any skill level. And probably really nice when it starts getting super hot. I know one of the problems 
that a lot of us have with young kids and or maybe a, a spouse that doesn't like to just sit there in one spot and fry. Uh, this is a great way to at least have some breeze and you don't have to be a good caster. I mean, all you have to do is be able to get it out a few feet and let, let the water do the rest of the, of the work for you. Cool way to explore some new areas and see where the fish are. So far, they've all been back there, which is interesting. Yeah, they've been in the channel, so that's where we're heading back. We're going to head back from, uh, we're going to go into the current, see how much of a difference that makes. I'm going to reel mine up and check it, see if I still have a tail, and if not, how much I got left. So I did get that one little strike. Oh, still looking good. Slam shady, full effect. Woo! Slam shady. And as far as the hook set too, you really don't have to do much because a lot of these fish, when they when they strike, they, they strike and turn. It's not like a flounder where they kind of go with. A lot of times these trout will strike and then start turning back. And uh, just the momentum of the boat plus the fish turning, it'll it'll get right in the corner of their mouths. So I basically just don't even don't even set the hook. And uh, and that's the best way that I found to get to get these hookups. Sometimes they'll miss it, you know, they'll miss it, they'll bite short, and it'll come out of their mouth. And if you jerk it real fast, that'll, that just is not a natural movement of anything that they are used to eating. And, um, and so they'll oftentimes just come back and, and grab it as long as it doesn't dart off. How, how often are you uh, moving the rod tip up and, and letting it do a little drop? And just every once in a while, I, I basically just do it to feel, I want to make sure that, the um, reason why I like paddle tails for this is you can feel that, that paddle tail moving. Um, again, as long as you have braid line, thin braid line, you can actually feel really well. So I'm just keeping it honest, make sure there's no weeds on it. And I can feel that tail sitting there and fluttering down there. So I'm just going to let it, let it ride till I get something. Hey, let's talk about that snook you caught last night, dude. I didn't even talk to you. Uh, I saw the picture. Yeah, it was a good fish. I was just uh, Where using, were you this, fishing? using the same rig. I was fishing docks. That's been the If you're an insider member, trend. you'll get to see the exact dock, okay? Come on, guys. If you're not an insider member, what are you waiting on? Yeah, and I was, ba I was basically following the, the exact recipe that was highlighted in, in last week's um, you know, Smart Fishing Spot game plan. It's uh, what we do every week for insider club members. We, we uh, just highlight what's been working and then, uh, and then talk about the type of spot to go to. And so I literally just used that exact framework. I was exploring a, a dock line that I, the docks have been working really well lately and specifically some a certain around some certain structure that I'll save for the the uh, insider club members. But I found a, a new a new dock shoreline I never fished that fit the mold that was the right type of setup based on what's been working. And uh, sure enough, I just I went out right before dark. I left at 5:30, and. Uh, Literally the second dock I fished, I caught a red, and then two docks down, I caught a, a snook that was it was 35 inches. A really nice snook. I got really lucky on it. I had Otis on the boat, so he was he was causing trouble. Um, and then uh, oh, there we are. Oh, I missed missed him. So sometimes they'll come back and hit it again. That one felt trouty. Dang it. But uh, yeah, so that snook, um, I just had 20 pound, I had the same exact rig, 10 pound braid, 20 pound leader. I was not expecting a big snook like that, and I got very fortunate. Oh, dang, missed another one. Yeah, I had a little pop too. I feel like we're, uh, yeah, this was the good zone last getting time. Getting back in the zone. Auto zone, sponsored by Auto zone. But, uh, but yeah, so these, you know, these lures, right, it's, it's a good lure is a good lure, whether you're casting, like when I was fishing docks, I was casting, I was skip casting under the docks, I was actually jigging it really slowly. And uh, in this case, same lure, but totally different application. And uh, now we're just trolling and basically just, just covering, gr covering ground, let, the, let that tail do the work. And uh, it's, it's working. So get a good lure and just uh, use it. And it's a, a big part of its depth control. So a lot of people would ask like, what kind of jig heads we use, and it really doesn't matter too much as long as the, the proper weight is being used. Because some people mentioned, uh, I, I did that report yesterday and I shared, I, was, I said I was using that Texas Eye jig head I've been testing out. And some people say they really don't have any luck. And uh, then they're, they're asking what, what size 
And just like all jig heads, I get some of every size. I get some 1 8 ounce, some 3 16 and some quarter ounce. And, uh, and I'll use whichever one is, you know, based on the depth, right? I use it based on, on, my, on the depth coverage that I want to do. Oh, there you have one? Yeah. Dang. Um, so, so the actual depth coverage is very, very important. It's something that I overlooked for a long time. I would just use the same lure over and over again. And if it's not getting down at the right depth. And if you guys missed the episode, the very first live when we did where we fished at Roa Docks. Yep. And Luke and I were side by side, same slam shady lure, casting on the same docks. And he outfished me like seven to one. Might have been eight to one. <laughs> and the only difference was the jig head size. That was it. I was making the same beautiful money cast. <laughs> Had the same confidence. Well, towards the end I didn't. It was really, really low. I feel like a complete loser. Oh, oh man, I missed another one. Um, but that was so interesting, right? I mean, we're talking about a one fourth versus, or did you have a what? What do you have? I had the quarter ounce. You had a quarter, and yeah. You, and you had the three sixteen, so it really it's wasn't, crazy. It that seem small like, of a difference yeah. made. I mean, literally, I caught one snook, and you caught like seven or eight fish yep. in a you know thirty-five minute, forty-minute period of time. Check my bait. And that was eye opening. You got one? No, I'm checking my bait. I'll bring them on in too. Now keep yours out. Let's have let's have at least one out at all times. Well, I had a couple little strikes here too. I kind of want to check it. Okay. All right. You got good. yours? Yep. All right. So you go aggressive on the cast, huh? Might as well get it out there. Get sucker out there. All right. So going back to the honey hole here where we were, and also too. Let us know if you guys want, if you like these types of, of live podcasts. This is real world. Sometimes you get into them and then sometimes you got to go back and find them. Uh, I love this because it's everything I think we wish was out there, right? Yeah. Nothing against the fishing TV shows. They're great. I mean, they're there for entertainment more than how to. And obviously they're heavily produced and edited. These are zero edits, even though <laughs> Cody knows how to edit. Great editor. Good job, Cody. But on these, he loves these because uh, he's not allowed to edit. We yeah. keep everything no in. One, Even when one we rule. screw up and do dumb stuff or say dumb things, which is one all rule the time. is no edit. Simple as that. So let us know if you like them. And then, two, any specific types of species, types of fishing, types of areas. We've had a few captains have reached out to us, some brave and bold captains, might I add who have offered for us to go fish and film with them on their boats. And it's, it can be kind of stressful to, to know that you've got a 35 to 50 minute period to catch fish. And some days that's like the worst hour when you decide to roll and you catch fish afterwards or before. And sometimes, man, and all the magic happens right when you're filming. Uh, so thank you guides. If any of you uh, are up for it, I know Peter Deeks has said, he don't care, he ain't scared. <laughs> So uh, Deeks is going to be uh, coming up probably in the next week or two. We're just trying to get a, really a time frame on his uh, busy schedule. Guy's got Bill Dance and stuff calling him up to fish. But that'll be a fun one because with Deeks, I mean, if you guys still know about him, he's one of our, our full-time fishing coaches. The guy is the elephant hunter, meaning he goes after some big, big, big fish. You so, never know what you're going to catch with Deeks. So it has been interesting. Um, you know, we're going into we're going uh, yeah into the current this time, and it's definitely been a noticeable decrease in action. So where was that area that we just passed? So we're we're on we're now on the other side of the cut, okay, okay. but that shouldn't be that big of a difference. Maybe it does. We're going to dial this in so we can do a full report on it this is all new to us which is kind of cool like I don't ever remember purposely trolling for trout yeah I never I've never done it before till last week but after that one time I was like man this uh, oh, there we are that was just a fun day we'd already had an a oh, amazing day of catching a lot off. of fish and this was just like icing on uh, on the cake to catch you know another seven to ten more trout trolling man, in an man. area where normally we would have been checking emails and that felt not like admiring drop. God's beautiful creation here. I think I got a little bit a little bit ambitious on that hook set. 
that felt trout. What happens when the cameras are on, dude? Remember, you gotta take a deep breath. Calm yourself down, Lukey. Calm yourself down. Calm down, Cody. I'm a little excited back there. I'm seeing some birds. Seeing some depth changes up here. Whoa, there we go. Got one? Yep. Nice. Oh, he's taking drag out. Oh! Is that a trout? That's a nice Dude. trout. Dude! Oh, you want to slow it down a little bit? Get the net. We got a netter here. And this is what I'm talking about. You see me trolling. They hate it. Boop, 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 boop. Riding dirty. Little slam shady. Little slam yeah, these, shady. <laughs> these fish feel like they're about 10 pounds bigger yeah. than they are. Look at that guy in there. Here we go. Solid fish. Not really, but, but doggone, it felt like a beast. That is so much fun. Um, what a blast. Oh, I'll do it the right way. Wet my hands. I'm gonna grab this guy. Oh see. man, he uh, kind of inhaled that. Some Got some, uh, some pliers for me there, Lukey. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and for, uh, just for overall catch and release, it's uh, good to have these, you know, just a, a net handy for trout a lot of times. Trout are, you know, they have pretty, pretty, uh, pretty light mouths, so if you just pick them up by the, by the line, a lot of times they'll shake off and just like hit the boat, which is never good, like, oh, like that. like that, jeez Louise. And uh, so it's good, to, it's good to have, you know, have a good, a nice net like this with, um, that actually has, you know, um, rubber line mesh, very, very important. Should have quit horsing around. Let's get let's See, this go. This is embarrassing. So th that's what not to do when you get a fish. Just get him back in the water. Well, the irony is I, good learning lesson here. I did wet my hands down. Turned out to be a one slippery little trout. Yeah, the proper thing to do is hold it with two hands. First of all, have it in the net. And then if you are gonna hold it, hold it with two hands. Let somebody else take a picture. Just don't do what you just saw. But that's another good reason that we do these live. You guys get to learn. I, I was gonna say our mistakes, but usually my mistakes. So he destroyed that thing. So what I just did, I bit the head off because the, the, the jig head had actually ripped through. So I bit the head off and now I have a slightly shorter slam shady, but doggone, this is still gonna destroy it. That's a good way to, to get get some more uh, bang out of your bang for your buck on these on soft plastics. A lot of times it's just like the very last like quarter inch or whatever is all kind of torn up, and uh, just get rid of that and, and the rest of it's clean and. and what I like to do is put it back in and make sure it's still swimming well. I don't know if you can see this over here, Cody, but always put it back in. Make sure it's not doing a bunch of helicopters because if you throw that sucker back. And he's helicopter now. Nothing is gonna hit it. Not even lizard fish and puffer fish. Even they turn their head to a helicopter. Right, Lukey? That's right, Joe. Yeah. yeah, one other thing too, we're uh, we're talking with a a marine biologist about bringing marine biologist on board to. To one, you know, answer answer questions that uh, that we have. Two, to maybe do some some kind of tips and courses because the one advantage they have, and this is a marine biologist who is a marine biologist by trade, but also was a, a fishing guide and and really understands how to go out there and catch fish based on his knowledge of why and where fish are at certain times. And to me, I think like that's next level, right? About like truly understanding. The, the fish. Uh, he's less about lures and techniques and more about studying the feeding habits and, uh, and, and the feeding patterns and the biology of the different types of, uh, of, of fish that we're targeting. And, and yeah. his expertise happens to be speckled trout and snook and redfish and flounder. Uh, so let us know what you think. It, it, it's, um, it's something we're pretty excited about, something we've never really done before. 
and, and like he would be like a team member. So we would have him, you know, as kind of part of the staff. And uh, I think it would add just tremendous value. And uh, he is just a wealth of knowledge and, and can actually talk like an angler and to an angler, not just, you know, a nerdy beaker, beaker and test tube guy that talks in beaker and test tube lingo. Well, and more importantly, just to have a good, memer, 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 a good memer. connection to the, the scientists, like to the actual, you know, because the, the actual rule makers, right, they're relying on scientists for accurate data. And, um, and, so, and so we'll basically have an, an end with that group to just to help, help make sure that the laws that are, that are going through are actually the proper ones based on actual science and not on any sort of, um, I don't know, I, would, I won't say scandalous stuff, but just not, not, not based on, just, just having the, the right information, having actual facts that are impacting policy and not, uh, not just kind of hearsay, if you will. So it'll be a great way to have a direct, direct tie to somebody like that. Yep. Oh, there we go. Oh, that was a nice hit there. There we go. That's probably a lady fit. Oh, keep me your side. Trying this thing's running all over the place. He's got <laughs> legs. He's got legs. I tell you what, I'm not going to do this time is try to bring in the boat and get a picture. Those of you listening to the podcast, you might have heard the thump. Yes, that was me. Well, I don't know that I had necessarily dropped him. It was more that he decided to get really antsy and try to wriggle right when I was getting a picture. So I'm going to blame it on that. Is that a ladyfish or a trout? Bluefish. Yeah, a little bluefish. Son of a gun. You never know what you're going to catch doing this. Didn't even slash my line, which is always a bonus. You know, that's pretty funny. Check out old Blue. He's antsy. Oh, we should uh, we should get a little picture for Nick Sergio. What do you think? No, we're... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Our boy Nick says that these uh, bluefish, buddy, you got to stop uh, wrangling here. That they have the coolest eyes, isn't that what he said? Yep. And uh, I don't want to get my hand in there uh, to find out. Yeah, they have some pretty gnarly teeth. You want to check out that code? I'm trying to pull this thing up, and he is literally biting down on my. You see those teeth? Yeah, this joker is. Look at, look at the slave shade. He has just destroyed oh, there, there it. Oh, Luke's on. on. Luke's on. Oh, that's a, that's a trout, I believe. <laughs> yeah, this looks like a trout. Got a little trout. Surfing a man. Golly, it felt like it was a giant trout. Uh, so when you have that boat moving, it's uh, it definitely makes for a lot of fun. And again, it's something just to have a kid do this. You know, they think they're catching something giant. In reality, this little guy was taking out drag, and this is like a this is like a ten inch trout. <laughs> It felt like a giant. So as, as far as proper handling. Yeah, let's do the right way to do it. Yeah, so if you're gonna grab it, you can grab it, but I always keep it over the side of the boat. That way, in case it does fall, it goes in the boat, not on the deck. Uh, but but really the worst thing, we, we had a podcast. This was actually a pretty eye-opening uh, podcast. We had a podcast with a scientist who has uh, been testing out, doing research on catch and release fishing. And, uh, and what was really surprising, obviously, like, you know, I've always tried to take, like, really good care to, of the fish's um, skin. Dang, I just made a cast. I'm getting hits already. Um, Got a hit already? But what he's saying is that the, the biggest cause of actually a fish dying and not surviving being, being released isn't the skin being, you know, they, they literally wiped, like, on sea trout in particular, they wiped every oh. bit of slime off of it, off of multiple ones, and uh, put it in the tank and just watched to see what happens. And there was no problem at all. Like they, they just grew the slime back. Granted, it's not good for them, so don't purposely wipe slime off. They're, they're obviously testing. But what, what was the biggest factor is a, a trout hooked deep. So if it gets hooked in the gills, like game over. Or in the stomach, like it was almost like 100% uh, mortality rate compared to like dropping it. Granted, that's not good, but it, it typically won't kill them. You just trying to make me feel better about myself? No, it's just uh, it's just the importance of, of not deep hooking fish, which is the importance of, of using circle hooks. 
right? Like if you're uh, if you're just using live bait and have the have the rod in the rod holder or cut bait and, and you're not actively fishing, um, circle hooks are essential. But if you're doing stuff like this right now, we're trolling, right? There's always there's always tension on the line. Uh, it is really it's difficult to hook fish. Like Joe's one trout was hooked kind of deep, but it wasn't. Oh, there, oh, I just missed one. But it wasn't all the way all the way down, right? It's really hard. Those fish will usually grab it and turn, and, and that just that alone, the fact that there's tension on the line, it's not going to hook it. It'll almost always get them right in the corner of the mouth. So uh, it's just be real mindful of that. Is um, you know, catch and release is very important. Just to maintain our fisheries. A big part of that is is using the proper gear and not deep hooking. Um, and then obviously when you have them, try to get them get them in the water as quickly as possible. So one other tip, uh, I don't know, is that 150 yards right behind Cody, where I'm staring at, is what do you know? Boat launch, yeah. and yet we we just caught those two fish right here behind it. And you know what most of us do is you know we we launch and we want to go far away and there are so many fish to be caught right here another great tip is the residential canals right obviously most of them are going to have an idle zone uh another great time to just man throw a throw a lure out there and uh see what happens tell uh tell tell the kids spouse friend hey you hold this uh this rod here as we uh we cruise out you never know what's gonna happen. I mean, all those fish were caught right there uh, while I was staring at someone launching their other uh, boat over there. Yeah, and we gonna, haven't, uh, I mean, what, what have by. we burned? 0.2 gallons of gas, maybe? Yeah, this, this thing just, I mean, it just sips, sips gas going this slow. Such a cool uh, cool way to do it. So now what are we doing, going super yeah, close? We're gonna or? buzz, we're just gonna buzz this fly. The, so the, the way to maximize results is to go on the edges. In this case, we have a grass flat. If, if you don't have seagrass in your area, just like the edges of oyster bars where it goes from shallow to deep, I just try to get the bait as close as I can to that to that depth change. That's going to hold, you know, a lot of sea trout and uh, really everything. Like everything kind of will uh, could possibly be there. And uh, so now we just position ourselves where there's a there's a, a, a trough. You know, the, the edge of the flat is right here. We're going in line with it. Mine's kind of up on top. Joe's is just off the edge. And uh, we both have our rods going out, kind of like outriggers. And so we'll basically have like a 10 foot swath or whatever, maybe 12 feet, I guess. So what here in 30 minutes, 35 minutes, we caught ladyfish, squirrel, trout, and bluefish. Four species, 35, 40 minutes. Yep. Yeah, wow. Paddle while tail exploring. lure, slam shady. Yeah. Oh, that's all you need. Come on now. Probably wants to complicate it. Oh, you need whoop oh, there. Oh, nice, nice strike there. Hit it again, baby. Yeah, I got so, a little, I got a little too aggressive. So here we're in about got a little three. Excited. We're about four feet of water now. There's kind of we're on the edge still. There's now a little grass line that's shooting out. I know we just went down to five feet, so I'm gonna let a little line out. And uh, yeah, it's it's pretty. Uh, Pretty easy fishing, really. And, and fun. Oh, I just had a hit. It takes the pressure off, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. you can do this when the tide's maybe not perfect. Just, oh, there we go. Got him? Yep. Just to catch some fish. Trout, oh, double, oh man, I had him. Little guy. There we are, double. Double up. Double. Double it up, baby. Oh, I think mine's bigger than that. For your sake, I hope so. <laughs> yeah, so doubling up on trout while trolling, like something I never would have even like right. time considered. I'll get him out quick. Make yeah, up not for, a giant, uh, but bigger than bigger than Joe's. I'm so gonna again, go back in here because normally, once you find a hole like that, when you're doubling up, there's probably plenty more in there. Yeah. So what I'm doing, I'm keeping it over the boat, right? Get a hold of it. Oh, and add another strike. This, this is a great way to just find good spots too. There, I think it's going to be good, good to go, no problem. Bait's still good. So Luke, I just got another strike right out here, just making a normal cast. Yeah, we can watch out. Let's yeah, see. and obviously if you find a spot like this, you know, we we probably would be better off just drifting this and going slower, but. 
podcast is about trolling for trout. Yeah, so. who's got time for that? Yeah. <laughs> we're, so. we're movers and shakers, baby. <laughs> Yeah, we're just gonna keep on uh, keep on moving. But uh, but yeah, so, and this is even for finding different spots, right? If there's a long flat and you want to see where the fish are, troll for them. Once you find them, the smart thing to do would be for us to actually put the troll motor down and now fish this area. We could probably catch a ton of trout, but um, again, the podcast is about trolling for trout, so yep. we gotta we gotta stick to it. But All there's right. clearly a lot of fish there. When you double up while trolling, the motor will definitely scare off a lot of the fish. We're only in four feet of water, right? So the fact that we that we hooked two while the boat just ran over it, there's probably a bunch of fish down there. Yeah, we'll have to make another uh, another run. And so let's do that. We just doubled up. So uh, let's sum it up and, and close. Yep. Summary is this is super easy, super fun. All you need is a slam shaded paddle tail. You know, depending on your depth of where you are, uh, obviously a jig head. And the jig head type doesn't really matter. So nope. I have the Texas Eye, Joe has the traditional open open jig head. And uh, not even you don't even need a boat, right? I mean, you do this on kayak, do it on anything, yeah. do it on a jumbo. boat. Probably, this guy over here in a little, little dinghy. It would definitely work better with a kayak because it doesn't have the boat spooking everything. Clearly, but, uh, it not, uh, not matter too much. And, and, if, and if you want help just going out there and consistently catching tons of fish I urge you to join us in the Insider Club. We created it because it was everything we wish was around when not necessarily we were bad fishermen. I think a lot of people think, oh, it's for newbies. No, like we like 10% of our members are full-time guides and they're using it for the discounts and the network. And a lot of our members, like our, our ideal customer, if you will, is someone who loves fishing, who wants to get the next generation out fishing. Luke's on again yeah. Yeah, and who really just wants to maximize their time. Every single Friday, we get on a, a little video and get on online maps and literally show you where to fish. And so some of our members, and they're busy, right? They got jobs, they, yep. got, they got life, they have kids, and they just want someone to tell them exactly where to go fish. And that's what we do every single week based on real trends, based on real science, and, and it's, based on the yeah. weather. And it's what literally has just happened. So obviously last, last Friday, we, you know, we gave uh, included that as far as the game plan we talked about this so this is all the latest and greatest trends what types of spot to go to tactics like this that are working and uh, it's just the best way to get the best and and latest info while also saving a ton of money on gear we have a, yeah, a the, really big uh, discount program that we just launched yeah and everything from rods reels line sunglasses uh, things that are so big that we're not allowed to publicly talk about them. But our members know, got over 12,000 members from Texas facing up to New Jersey, really targeting the inshore saltwater species. But we got everyone from, from bass anglers to you know the near shore and offshore guys as well yeah. and gals. And even, even people from up north who just come down for a few months that just want to maximize their time in the water. And that's really yep. what it's all about. It's just, it's just maximizing time in the water. You know, a lot of people, us included, we, don't, we can't get in the water as much as we like and uh, just a great resource to uh, just to have the human intelligence, real-time human intelligence from both us as well as the members. You know, we now have a platform where, where all the members can post their own reports. And, uh, and stuff like this is where we actually got that idea from, from that mentor, Dave Audi. Um, and uh, just a wealth of information there. It's literally, the good thing about fishing is that it's impossible to know it all. And, uh, and, and it's just a forever learning experience. And that's and, been my favorite part is the network, you yep. know, the, the private community. We built an actual online private community. Uh, it, it feels and looks like an app you put on your phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, all four if you want. And uh, there's where 12,000 of us are posting our reports talking about what's working. There's no cursing, no negativity, no trash talking, no spam, no selling. It's just guys and gals who are passionate about fishing and want to share and want to be helpful and want to learn. And I just want to make new friends. We got a lot of people meeting up and uh, and going out and having having some fishing time, beer drinking time, whatever you're into. So that's it. Check it out at saltstrong.com forward slash pricing, or if you just want to go to saltstrong.com if you're in your car working out and uh, can't remember the pricing part, go to saltstrong.com, click the button, it'll take you to that pricing page. You can see the special that we have going on right now. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for all the love, all the support. Hit me up if you made it this far. Here's my email, Joe at saltstrong.com, Luke at saltstrong.com, L-U-K-E. Let us know if you like these, if you want us to fish certain areas. Ooh, nice uh, little drop there. Uh, 
certain guides or certain areas, states that you want us to check out, let us know. Anything we can do to help improve or better serve you, we'd love to hear from you. That's it. Stay tuned. The next podcast. We be out rolling. It's Joe Simons, one of the co-founders here at Salt Strong. Have you claimed your free pack of these irresistible Slam Shady Paddle Tail Lures? If not, click down below to grab yours. If you're an inshore saltwater angler and you want to catch more redfish, more speckled trout, more snook, more flounder, then you have to check out these lures. We got one pack for free for every angler that wants them. Click down below now to grab yours.